those are called those call on, on absolute deaf ears. There has yeah, been maybe. No hold on, let it finish. None. No investment in increasing the number of nursing numbers. The the politicians and the statisticians will tell you in the service in Northern Ireland we have 700 more nurses now than we had five years ago. But that does not take into consideration, of course, the increase in demand and all the things that are going on where nursing roles are required. So in our communities, you know, health visiting, district nursing, in our hospital wards. And let's be very clear, when we did our work in safe staffing for our medical and surgical wards, we needed another 250 nurses to put that right. And that was only in medical and surgical wards. And now we're looking at district nursing. So we are really short of nurses. I understand that, and I agree. I agree with, I say, Dr. Peter Carter and yourself, Janice, on that point. And I'm, I'm presenting the case. What, whenever you say you're highlighted the point to local politicians, which I don't have a lot of faith in, and also wider, you should be making the point to the Migration Advisory Committee. And if you make a strong enough case that there's a shortage in nursing, which we all know there is, but why we continue to fund a practice at £40 million pounds to recruit nurses from outside the EU, to, to which returns a statistic to say that we're not in shortage, this will continue as it is. And I'm, I'm presenting this case to say, why don't we look at that? Here's Paul. Well, Morning, Paul. How are you doing? Go ahead, Paul. It's just about your immigration, the immigration legislation within the United Kingdom. Yes. You know, yeah. if, you go to Australia, if you go to Australia to work on it for a year, this is the legislation that you have to apply by. If you go there, you don't get any benefits because you're not allowed any money from the government. OK? Mm-hmm. You have to show a return ticket that you have bought if you're coming home, which could cost you a £1,000 for two flights. OK? You also um, have... I, 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 I need to say um, to, to the caller, Stephen, and I'm sorry I missed their name, but the nurse, nurses in Northern Ireland are in demand all over the world and there's a high percentage of them actually going to Australia. And nurses are exempt from those rules in Australia. They're exempt from those rules in most other countries in the world because there is a global shortage of nurses. So this, this is my in point. Context, uh, so there is a global shortage, and everybody's in a competition um, to get nurses. And I can tell you, nurses that are trained in Northern Ireland are at the top of everyone's list because they're so well-trained, and they're such good nurses, and they can get opportunities anywhere. Here's Gabby and Yuri. Morning, Gabby. Stephen, how are you doing? Go ahead, Gabby. Stephen, this morning, three weeks ago, I was fighting for my life. What happened? Um, I had cancer, and I didn't know I had it, Stephen. Just knocked me off my feet Monday, three weeks ago. Taking the hospital, they told me on Monday night I might see Tuesday morning. My God. A young Indian that was there in the hospital, they couldn't get these tubes down my nose and down my throat. They said that my, my bowel would explode during the night, and a young Indian froze my throat and up the back of my nose, and all of one of the doctors said, I would never thought of doing that. And because of him, I'm still here to annoy you. The next morning when I woke up after all the surgery, there was a young lady from the Philippines. And we should be so lucky. And people have got over here. Gabby, you've been with me for years, for goodness yeah. sake. Yep. So, first of all, I'm I'm sorry to hear what you're going through, and thank goodness you're still with us. Um, oh, Gabby. What I mean... Gabby, these, hold on, hold on, Gabby. Yeah. Hold on, hold on. So tell me what's happened to you. What what type uh, of cancer do you have? Uh, bowel cancer. They took out a massive tumour and cut away loads of our stuff, staying. All they had is a wee niggly pain. I, the word cancer never came into my family the Monday three weeks ago. And how did you how did you not know you had it? I'd been running the doctors and doing tests for prostate and bowel cancer and my bloods would come back clear. And what were the symptoms, Gabby? I had a wee niggly pain down in my groin. Nothing else. And as my mate said, you know, if your car was making a wee noise, you'd have all the mechanics in the country looking at it. Because it was in my groin, I just kept putting it up because it was a wee pain I could put up with Stephen. And I so regret it now. And what brought this to a head then? Um, I was going down to get a camera up the back end to uh, look to see what they were saying I had diverticulitis or some, some word like that. And um, they found an obstruction. So they gave me this stuff. <clears throat> you know the stuff you take before they put the camera in that wipes out your system? I, I took it and it didn't clear out in the system. And then started getting cramps and I just wasn't fit to do anything, Stephen. And then... Um, a wee, a wee doctor come out to see me Monday three weeks ago and she says, get this man in the hospital. He spotted straight away. And I mean, all the people around me had all different colours of skin from me. 
They're from all different countries. And, you know, see these morons who, who throw bricks at their houses and all? They, they should stop and think that they could be the people that's going to save their granny. And when did you find out? How did they tell you you had cancer? They just told me very bluntly on the Monday night to put me through a big CT scanner and all. And, and first of all, they told me if I didn't get these tubes in, I wouldn't see Tuesday morning. And then on, on the Tuesday morning, they, they, they gave me um, the scenario. I think the doctors just give you it straight from the heart and, and prepare you for all events. And just. But what just what just blew my mind there, Gabby, is that so you, you, you don't know you have cancer. Even, you even go I, was, I was never in a hospital before in my life. I'm 63, I'm on no tablets, I'm perfectly healthy as such. And, you know, just to be knocked it on my feet. And so you go in the hospital, right? Yeah. Um, you, you, you don't know you have cancer. And then they say, look, you have cancer. And you, did they seriously say, and you might not survive till tomorrow? No, they told me I wouldn't. If I didn't get these tubes into me. It's not a mate. The, the, the big man in the hospital come into me at 10 o'clock at night to me and my wife. And they told me I wouldn't be here in the morning. Because one doctor suggested waiting tomorrow morning and knocking me out and putting these tubes into me. He said, if we don't get these tubes into this man the night, he says, he won't be here in the morning. He says, Mr. Corden, we have to talk business. And the wee Indian come in and he fittered about, and I own my life. My goodness. So, Gabby, what what happens when you're told you might die within 24 hours? Like, what, well, how, how does your brain cope with that? I said, no more Nolan children. at night. Okay. Even I spent the whole night doing something I've never done before, same prayers. It was tough. Everything goes by, Stephen. It's like you're someone. Look, you know, in this in this program, it's like a this program is like a family. You know, we we started off in City Beat maybe about twenty years ago, and lots of you then followed me followed me to here to Radio Ulster, and there are quite a few of you who, you know, I don't meet you every day, but I I hear you during the week, and we talk to each other, and yeah. you know, you're like friends for it, goodness sake. It and was we, quite tough, Stephen. It is um, surreal when people tell you, you know, the, the you shocking thing. A wide family and yeah, your friends and. All of a sudden, the time it could be over. And the shocking thing about what you're saying, Gabby, no matter whether it's me sitting here in this radio studio or you know, um, the team behind the scenes here or yeah. people sitting in the car, people sitting at home, this could happen to any of us. Yeah, Stephen, here's the thing. My God. And we had to tell you, the only time we've been to a chapel at a wedding or a funeral and, you know, you say to yourself, you're just not ready. You reassess your life. So that 24 hours, you say you sat up all night praying, yeah. that, that that just must have been... Well, like, what do you do? Do you I start... I sleep anyway with all the tubes. That, but do you start ringing morning. your family or do you start contact? What do you do uh, when you're told that? I didn't want to see my family. You didn't? No. Why? I didn't want to hurt them. So did you not contact them? They were all out in the corridor crying. No, it's... How do you say cheerio to your kids? You know, It's tough. I'm a tough old turkey, Stephen, but... Um, I know you are. The man up above can pull us all in the lane when he needs to. I prayed and prayed, and the doctor the next morning just told me, he said, somebody up there doesn't need you, Mr. Corn. He says, because the two surgeons we need to do this operation are down there prepping for you, he says, and you're so lucky. He asked me to sign a piece of paper because they're going to put one of these bags on the side. He says, we, we can do a wee fancy job and remove the bag in six months, he says... We don't have had luxury, Mr. Corn. We've spotted a lot of stuff that we need to remove, and I'm not spending my couple of hours working on you doing fancy sewing. I have a lot of work to do on you. So he says, We're going in there to fight for your life. We need your help. And I say that, and I just said to him, Look, you can take my head off if you want. Because we're not that extreme. And as I say, when I woke up, first face, one of the first nurses I seen was from the Philippines. And she was with me for a week in intensive care, and she was fabulous. She was such a lovely, lovely lady. Your call in a heartbeat today, Gabby, your call in the last five or six minutes, uh, you know, uh, is, is, is much more powerful a message than, than I yeah. or any politician in this country or anybody else in this country could be sending out about how the racists in this country and yeah, those people yeah. that, 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 that start talking about why certain people from whatever type of ethnic background should not be welcome here, you know, let yeah. them hear what you're saying today. These people, when, when I woke up, the person who put the injection into my arm is from the Czech Republic. I, I, I'm a nosy person. I keep saying, where are you from? Where are you from? And, and I spoke to them on the colour of their skin 
and, and including the people from here that were working with me. None of them asked me whether a Protestant or a Catholic going in the fight to save my life. There's none of them says, are you from Newry? I don't worry about him. Them people fought as a team. I'm so proud of Daisy Hill Hospital. And, and you see the guy who saved my life, the main man. Stephen, you know, I, I, I ain't going to... That man supports the Republic of Ireland. I'm going to try and do something to thank him. He, he's, he's one of his season ticket holders. And, and I will write to everybody connected with the Republic of Ireland to get that man even a signed ball or something. But here's the thing. That man gets out and he leaves his children every morning and he comes in the Newry. Like a lot of them do right across the north of Ireland. And, and he saves people's lives as a matter of routine, as a day's work. And, and we just don't look at them and appreciate it. You know, Stephen, I, I'm quite popular in Newry and I've seen that among the cards and all. But I mean, I, I do lots and lots of charity work here. And that man just stepped in Tuesday morning three weeks ago and, and brought me back from certain deaths and then... Um, Probably on Wednesday morning, he's doing the same for some other family. And what's uh, the prognosis, Gabby? Are you, are you um, going to be all right? I'm good. I'm, I'm going back up on Friday morning for a wee check up. I'm trying to adjust to having a bag, but people tell me half the country has them, Stephen. You know, it, it, the, the alternative, I had Father's Day with my children. Um, you know, it's tough. But, but are you going to. Do they, they've told me whenever I'm strong enough. Do they think, Gabby, that they've got all the cancer out yeah, of he you? Told, he told me how it all, and he wants to give me a blast of chemo to make sure. He says whenever I'm strong enough, he wants me to go through chemo, just to make sure he missed nothing. But in his words, the morning I come out of the operation, he asked me the next morning, was I sore? And I said, I've had better mornings. He says, I, I dug some stuff out of you. <laughs> they just say it like it is, Stephen. You know, they're just ordinary guys doing what they call an ordinary job on them. We just don't realise what we have here in the north of Ireland. I mean, the whole team. When we see these young yeah. coloured girls and men walking down through our town to do their shopping, they should maybe stop and think, is that the man's going to save my mother next week? Or my granny? Or, or some stupid people who throw stones and get into trouble because of the colour of these people's skins? They might be looking up, up at them somewhere and say, thank God that lady was here. Well, listen, Gabby, as I said, you've been with us for years, and my yeah. goodness, uh, how this programme has taken a turn over the last 10 minutes just listening to you. I'm glad that... Uh, I'm glad, Gabby, that you're still alive. I'm glad that that, um, that you're still fighting. Yeah, I'd be here and, to annoy you. And at some stage, right. I'll get tickets for one of your shows if I'm lucky. Well, listen, <laughs> listen, you come you up to our first show and we'll look after you and we'll, uh, we'll get you dinner. It's yeah, on it's September. It's, it's a All great right? show... It's a great mix show, and uh, again, right. we, we need these people. All right, Gabby, thank you. Well, I'll leave you to think about that. See you tomorrow. The biggest show in the country. The show. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, good morning. I hope. I hope.